It can be tough to think about the future when the present is so unclear. But there is a question we now all need to face. What if the new normal isn't normal at all? Take a minute to think about the new world that we live in now. Did you ever imagine that you'd see a day when the hottest jobs were thermal scanner technicians, decontamination specialists, and contact tracers? Or that on the news would be protesters attacking police, downing drones, and blinding cameras with high-powered lasers? Today, my phone told me it needed an update so I could unlock it while wearing a mask. And a feature called exposure notification to track my movements while I multitask. Did you think there'd ever be drive through diners offering neon-lit dances and cheap thrills? And that VR devices would sell out as an escape from reality and everyday ills? What about airtight party suits for music concerts and raves? Or the founder of GitHub having to hide open source code in a cave? Did you ever expect to find robots everywhere? From flipping burgers in restaurants, to sorting products in stores, to telling people in parks to stand apart and beware. With deep fakes and fake news, we now live in a wilderness of mirrors, real or true. Who really knows? Even the Pentagon has started releasing videos of UFOs. There is only one thing of which we can be sure. We now live in a cyberpunk world, and the old world is no more. Cyberpunk, from the sleek super cities of Blade Runner, to the urban chaos of Ghost in a Shell. Cyberpunk worlds were a mix of high technology and low-life hell. Humans fighting machines from their underground base in Zion. Or replicants dreaming of attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. Forget your business plans and user guides. As William Gibson wrote, the street finds its own uses for things. The point of cyberpunk was that there is no such thing as neutral tech or benevolent control. Just a messy divide between human and machine, order and chaos, body and soul. So now that the cyberpunk world is here, what should we do? Well, if science fiction is any guide, there are three things you need to know if you want to survive. Number one, be probabilistic. In a world of uncertainty, you have to change how you think and decide. All your plans and predictions are now just a guide. To be probabilistic means as new information comes in, you're ready to update what you believe. So if a decision is reversible, take it now. You can always change it later if you need. Number two, be opportunistic. Coders know that there's a trade-off between when you explore and when you exploit. To explore is to seek the new. To exploit is to stick to what you know. In times of uncertainty, spending more time exploring will allow you to adapt and change. As Jennings said, it's not the big that eat the small, it's the fast that eat the slow. Number three, be optimistic. Pay attention in this time of crisis. Who around you is doing their best to adapt? Do they have the emotional fortitude to keep pushing through? How tolerant are they of risk and ambiguity? How tolerant are you? Those that handle the crisis well are the very people you need. Because the new world that is coming is not as forgiving as the former one. It'll demand agility, flexibility, and speed. So let's ditch the leadership cliches and acronyms. The only constant is not change, and VUCA is a joke. It won't be enough just to show up, lean in, set a moonshot, or get woke. Sharpen your skills and harden your mind. You need to be part warrior monk, part cyberpunk. What if the truth was right in front of us for anyone to see? There will be no new normal, only a state of permanent instability.